Hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime, and today we've been asked to match each equation on the left to the inverse equation on the right. And you can see that since we've started um, doing this idea of inverse equations, we hadn't seen any algebraic ones yet, ones featuring less uh, letters, uh, variables as we call them in math. Uh, but here we go with today, this same idea. But I would say once again, before you panic at the sight of letters, I cannot remind you enough times that algebra is just the ability to move forwards or backwards. And so it is the uh, probably the most important skill in algebra is understanding the concept of inverses, inverse operations or opposites. The basic idea is that once you have an equation, a balanced um, balanced, an equation is something that has a left-hand side and a right-hand side that are balanced. They are equivalent. They're equal to each other. So the idea is as long as you keep the two sides equal, you know, you'll be able to do whatever you want. And we can use that to rewrite things in ways that we understand better. Let me show you what I mean. So like A, A says some number, A, some number, I don't know, A, minus 2 equals 16. Now, I could think about that like a question mark like I did before and just ask myself what number minus 2 equals 16. Or I could rewrite that as an equivalent equation. I could start with what used to be the answer, the number by itself, and say if I took that 16 and I did the opposite of minusing 2, well, what's the opposite of minusing 2? Of course, it's adding 2. Then I could get back to that A answer I was looking for. For. And indeed, we do see a equivalent equation that's written like that. That's an inverse. And I see it right here. Number two says a is equal to 16 plus 2. They took that 16 and they did the opposite of subtracting 2. They added 2 onto it. So a matches up with number 2. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. It says a my, or plus 2 is equal to 16. Again, I could do the opposite here. I could start with what used to be the answer, 16. And instead of adding a 2, I could do the inverse, subtracting 2, and that would get me right back to A. And so the inverse of A an equation of A plus 2 equals 16 is 16 minus 2 equals A. Or and they wrote it in the opposite order here, A equals 16 minus 2. So B matches up with 4. Okay, let's take a look at C. C says... A divided by 2. Remember, a fraction bar is just a fancy way of saying divided by. So A divided by 2 is equal to 16. So if I wanted to do the opposite, I'd start with what used to be the answer, the number by itself, 16. And I could, instead of dividing, do the opposite. I could multiply by 2, and that would get me right back to where I started with A. So even though it looks a little differently, I can see 5 has that happening. It says to find A, multiply together 16 and 2. And so C is paired with V, 5. Okay, so same thing here. If I have 2A is equal to 16, now a lot of students don't know what's happening here. They're like, oh my gosh, the 2 and the A are all squished together. No symbol in between. I don't know what they're doing. Do remember that when a number and a letter are just really, really close with nothing between them, the two are multiplying. So this currently says 2 times A is equal to 16. Again, if I wanted to rewrite this as an inverse, I'd start with what used to be the answer, the number by itself. And I do the opposite of timesing by 2. I divide by 2. 16 divided by 2 is equal to A. Now you might say, Kate, there's no answer that looks like that over here. Don't forget that mathematicians usually use a fraction bar to mean divide. So here it is. To find A, take 16 and divide by 2. So the opposite of D is number 1, or I. Great. And then here's another one that students often forget, and I hope you won't because it comes up very frequently on the GED. Um, this idea of doing the opposite of squaring. So this says some number squared is equal to 16. So if I wanted to do the opposite of squaring, I'd have to start with the answer. What was the answer to the last thing? 16. And I'd have to do the opposite of squaring. Well, it turns out the opposite of squaring is square root. I'm going to draw that little radical check mark house over my 16. And that'll get me back to find A. So there you go. Uh, to find A, I'd have to do the square root of 16. So the opposite of E is number 3. So let's just write this out here. A, we said, was 2. B, we said, was 4. 
C we said was 5, D we said was 1, and E we matched with 3. Great, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math concept, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.